Hey folks, what it do with your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge, and this is another special edition of the B-Side Podcast. We're going to be talking about two things here, Slammiversary coming up tomorrow. We're going to get debuts. We're going to get a beefed up tag team. I've talked about that on the last couple podcasts. We're getting um, changes to the tag team division. So I thought this was a good time to um, not only rank the Impact tag team division, but look at who could possibly challenge the Rascals at Slammiversary. And we don't even know that it's going to be one team. could be two teams. We don't really know. But I, I put a handful of teams here that I think could answer the challenge and very simple categories here likely possible and unlikely so let's get into this and uh slammiversary on our way can't on the way can't wait all right so let's start with the awakening i think the awakening you know formerly known as the ascension this is a team i really would like to see a lot of people would like to see them because when they were doing the nxt thing they were doing phenomenal work. They were doing great work. And when, it's just when they went up to the main roster that they got ruined. But these guys, they have something. You know, um, I think Impact would be a great home for them. I think they're the perfect home for them. And I'm going to give them a possible. Now, I, I reported as a rumor that there's going to be a WWE GM at this pay-per-view. To be clear with you guys, I don't know who the GM is. Um, I have some ideas, but I don't know who it is that's the only the only information i know um i think it was critical sting here on youtube was the one who brought up the idea of <laughs> the teddy teddy long being the gm and uh coming out and you know booking a tag team match um with some former wwe guys here so you know i can see that that's kind of a possibility and don't forget this is the b-side podcast this is the impact lounge number one place to be for the impact wrestling fans so hit subscribe if it is your first time here Let's go with uh, Slater and Rhino here. Um, I think there's a strong possibility. I'm throwing them in the likely category. Uh, I think there's a strong, strong possibility that this could be how they debut Heath Miller. Uh, I call him Slater, but he's uh, he's really worked on his physique, and is he just? I think he has more potential than people are giving him credit for. Rhino needs something to do other than being ECW Rhino. Let's go around and gore people. You know what I mean? He just he just needs something more. I see I see that being a possibility. Uh, Motor City Machine Guns. I didn't think about this one, and uh, previously, but now I'm thinking more and more about it. We know that um, Chris Saban, you know, already works with the company. Alex Shelley's currently a free agent, but I think he works with Ring of Honor. But right now, I think he's in free agent status. And uh, you're talking about the Rascals here. Who could have the best match with the Rascals? And who could really get the crowd going? I really think this is going to be the opening match. And the opponent has to be the right one. I'm throwing them in the likely category as well. Um, And when I say likely, I just mean I can see it happening. I'm not saying it's going to be or I'm positive. I can just see it happening. Um... These guys would put on, a, on the best possible match with the Rascals, I think. All right, Anderson Gallows. A lot of you guys have been quick to fantasy book these guys into this match. As I said, this is probably going to be the opener. It might be the you know second match. Anderson and Gallows don't need an open challenge to debut, and they don't. They definitely don't need to answer an open challenge in the lower card of the pay per view. The Rascals are not necessarily a household name. They've never held Impact Tag Team Gold. There's no reason for the Good Brothers to to challenge them. Especially because we know they're coming. It's unnecessary to do this. So I I think they'll debut a different way. I find them highly unlikely to answer this challenge. Here's one one. someone, uh, Keem Fullerton, brought this one up. Matt Cardona and Brian Myers. I didn't even think about this one at all previously, previous to him saying something about it. Uh, Brian Myers has been kind of rumored to possibly come in an impact. Uh, Matt Cardona, I could only see him coming if AEW just doesn't have the, the room for him. But chances are, even if he's going to AEW, he's not signed with them right now. I had a conversation with Laurel Van Ness, Chelsea Green, about two years ago after she departed impact. And, you know, she, she said they left on really good terms and she wanted to leave on good terms. That's why she kept pushing the company on social media all the way up to her release. 
So I think she gets along with everybody there and has probably had good things to say. And I'm, I'm sure Matt Cardona could um, dip his feet in it. So I'm actually going to throw them in the likely category as well. Uh, so as you can see, there's three teams so far that I think have a good shot at opening, uh, answering this challenge. And then Primo Epico. Um, man, I really want to see these guys in impact, the Colognes. This, along with the Motor City Machine Guns, would give the you know probably the second best possible match. I did a podcast a couple weeks ago, and I was talking about these guys were kind of, I'm not saying they revolutionized the tag team division, but they brought that cruiserweight style of tag team wrestling when a lot of teams at the time weren't doing it. And I'm talking about when these guys were at their peak. And uh, they're super talented. I really think Impact should bring these guys in. And even though I, I think it's a possibility they could answer, I don't think they have enough buzz behind them right now to answer. So I will throw them here in the unlikely category. All right, so let's get into the current Impact Wrestling Tag Team Division. Now, this isn't a bad division. It really isn't. The potential is there. But as I've said many times over the last several weeks, the North didn't really have any programs with these guys, so they weren't able to get them to that next level. So... Um, that's going to reflect here. Last time I ranked the knockouts, I did it in a, uh, I think, like all-star, star, average category. So someone give me the idea because I asked for some opinions of uh, doing a five-star rating or a star rating. So we got five all the way down to one. Uh, one is pretty much non-existent because that means just garbage, and I'm not going to disrespect anyone on the uh, Impact roster for that reason. So to my knowledge, I mean, to my... Uh, Assumption now, I don't think I'll ever use the one-star rating. But let's get into these current tag teams. Um, we're going to start here with uh, the Rascals. Except that it's not lit. There we go. All right, so the Rascals, they're going to go right away here in the four-star category. The Rascals are the only team here that's really had legitimate shots at the tag team gold. And the couple matches they had with the North were amazing, especially the first one they had. Effing phenomenal. But even this one they had a few weeks ago, just really, really top-notch tag team wrestling. And um, even though the Treehouse is part of them and the, you know, the smoker gimmick and everything, I think they have to find a way to get away from that a little bit before they can take that next step and that next tier, you know, and actually hold the gold. Um... But I, th I think they've actually had three matches with them. I don't know. I just know every time they take on the North, it's been amazing. So I'm going to put them in a four-star. Who have we got? got next? The Deaners. All right, so the Deaners, uh, they did get one title shot, but that's when it was uh, Cody Deaner and some other cousin. Um, so these two individuals, Cousin Jake and Cody Deaner, I don't believe have ever had... A title shot um, they've got potential and cousin Jake has a lot a lot of potential I like their their promos and you know the segment they did with Willie Mack and you know they have this real dry humor thing going I dig it uh, but I, I don't really see him getting to that next level uh, but they're a good three-star tag team all right double XL triple XL my bad thinking to double XL the magazine uh, Triple XL, I like these guys a lot. I like the presentation. I like the music. Um, and I like them as a team. I wasn't so sure about the AC Romero signing when it happened. And I didn't know much about Larry D, but I quickly became a Larry D fan. Um, I really, I just, I like the presentation. The camera shaking and, you know, that they're serious when it comes down to the ring. They're not like a couple big buffoons. They haven't had that opportunity quite yet. They got a couple wins, uh, a couple losses. It's all kind of 50 50 with them. Um, I'm put them in a three-star category as well. Reno Scum, these are my guys. This is my team here. Um, man, I, I hate, you know, I really love these guys. I loved them the first time they were in Impact and was really happy when they came back, very disappointed when they left. I liked, you know, the pairing with Ace Austin, the teaming up, I should say, with Ace Austin to a point because it gave them something to do with a guy who was, you know, uh, moving up the card and had held gold, but it never really clicked. You know what I mean? Like they look so different. And, um, 
they got a win recently, and they even teased that you know maybe they would be uh, challenging next for the titles. And I mean, they even did a social media tweet about it, and and nothing. You know, um, Reno Scum. I hate to do this because it's my team. I got to put them in this two star category. And again, when I rank these teams, it has nothing to do with their talent level or anything like that. It's just the way Impact's been handling them. It's the way Impact has booked them, the way that Impact has presented them. So they they need to find something with Reno Scum to get them to that, you know, that next tier there. Uh, you know, I like giving them a manager type person or a third person, but it's got to be the right one. And Ace Austin wasn't a great fit, but uh, these guys can can really go they just don't get the, the you know the respect they deserve in that in that sense uh the north this one's real easy you know they're gonna go here uh five star you know five star tag team one of the best tag teams in the world uh longest reigning impact tag team champions uh what else can you say they you know they have a, a great blend of seriousness and, and uh, humor and the in-ring works amazing and you know, if they ever were to break this team up, they both have long singles careers ahead of them. And when they signed Josh Alexander, you know, I really always thought he was kind of a blue chipper, but I was kind of like, I don't know what they would do with him, you know? I don't know how they would present him on television. And, man, uh, teaming up, teaming him up with Ethan Page, creating the North, they've, they've nailed it. And um, I think they're going to have some big matches here coming up soon. It's just unfortunate that they're not having it with any of these guys. And then TJP followed by. And, uh, you know, clearly I didn't put the Desi Hit Squad on here because I don't believe they're a team anymore. And uh, I didn't put OVE on here. Obviously, they're definitely not a team. I would have put Cancel Culture if there was any signs that RVD and Jake Chris were still going to be a team. But I don't think so. So um, there's definitely room in the tag team division. They're also going to get the three-star here as well. You know what? No, they're going to get the four-star. I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, these guys, I thought, should have got the title shot at Slammiversary. But you know, I, I I get why they did what they did, but I thought I thought it should have been these guys. I would have much rather seen that. They earned it. They've got a non-title victory, and I don't think they ever got that title victory. And I think they were teasing, uh, you know, facing them at a uh, rebellion or whatever it is. You know, the North has been able to uh, get away from having to wrestle TJP and Falabon. They've got away from having to take on Willie Mack and Rich Swan. So, you know, that's another team that I think was going to be beefing up the division. So, you know, due to Rich's injury and the coronavirus, it's like, and then obviously what happened with uh, Dave and with uh, Joey Ryan, the tag team division has, a, <laughs> has had a little shakeup, but a big shakeup is coming. I told you guys, I've said on the last couple podcasts, they're going to be building up the tag team division, and it, it, it's clear. Now you guys see that with the Rascals Open Challenge and all that. You see it. It's coming, and uh, this is it. I would love to see Reno Scum get to this, you know, three-star category and get on with these guys. Um, you know, Triple XL is very close to that category too, but they've got a couple wins, and the presentation's good. So that's kind of why I got them there. But I, I want to see Reno Scum get there because because those are my guys. But um, Impact's not doing them a whole lot of favors. So thanks for checking out these rankings, folks. Uh, big weekend slam anniversary. You're getting a lot of podcasts, as I said, and not you know not a whole lot of short content. But um, you know big things coming slam anniversary. Hope you guys are excited. Talk to you soon. Peace.